18 of our Flippin' Live stream. It is May 18th, 2020, Wednesday, so we are halfway through the week, and I can't believe that as we're plowing through May already. Um, I am Andrew from 510 Books. We're going to talk about a couple different things today. The topic I wanted to talk about was was taking photos of items for eBay sale, uh, taking quality photos or the best photos you can take to try to sell your items. And we'll talk about some other stuff. So uh, let's get going. Yesterday was able to, so I had a um, uh, a book donation. Had some book donations yesterday morning at 10 a.m. and then was able to have my palettes, my seven palettes and seven gaylords, actually uh, were purchased yesterday by someone who ended up. The guy ended up actually being a a reseller himself, so he's actually a book reseller. And so that was good. I met somebody and we got to talk and and, uh, and I was able, we, it was mutually beneficial. I was able to get rid of all that stuff, clear out a lot of space. And he was able to, um, he's able to utilize those for his business, which is good. Um, here, I'll show you a little bit of a, a video here. Pat is here. Good morning, Pat. Awesome. Good to see you. For some reason, it's showing that nobody's watching, which is clear. Whoopsie. Uh which is clearly not true because uh, you guys are commenting. So that's strange. So we'll see if that changes. Um, so anyway, so yesterday uh, I, so weeks ago I had posted photos, uh, an ad on Mark, Facebook Marketplace. Actually, I need to take that off. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good reminder that I need to take that off of there. Um, I had posted on Facebook Marketplace that uh, I had, here I'm marking it as sold. Sold on Facebook. There we go. Okay. So that's gone. Um, sorry, guys. I want to make sure no one tried to contact me for that. So I had posted seven pallets and seven um, Gaylords, empty Gaylords that I had. <clears throat> and that was a couple weeks ago. I didn't get any responses. So actually, yesterday I was considering starting the process of with my box cutter cutting up the Gaylords <clears throat> into small small enough pieces so that I could slowly dump them in my dumpster and then maybe one pallet at a time put it into the dumpster and after weeks uh, I would get rid of all that stuff but um, I was contacted <clears throat> excuse me uh, yesterday by somebody who said they wanted to purchase them and could he come by and I said sure and then he came by uh, later that morning um, I made a silly video about it. Uh, and I'll show you in a second. And he was able to take them. So I was able to, I had them far in the back of the warehouse. So I had to take them all in the front um, so that when he came, he was able to, to pick them up. And yes, I'm finally selling off these Gaylords and uh, the Gaylord boxes and the pallets. So what I'm doing is I'm taking them out of the warehouse and piling them over here. 
because they're about to come up and come and pick them up for 20 bucks. Let's get rid of them. Get in there. Get in there. Oh, oh, it's so close. Only the pallets. Only the pallets. Only the pallets. Yes. <laughs> I moved them all. So they're all outside. Shove you. Here's all the pallets. All seven. All seven Gaylords. Yes. Silly little video there. Um, hello, Aaron. Good to have you here. Thank you for being here this morning. Brian says, do you get access to a dumpster with the warehouse or do you have to pay for it separately? No, there's a dumpster for um, for everybody in, on that side. So, so yes, there's a dumpster. I don't have to pay extra for it. Um, it's just one dumpster though. And there's, I think there's like 12 units. It's a big building, right? Long building. And there's 12 units on one side and 12 units on the other. And there's one dumpster for each side of the warehouse. And so we all share the dumpster on that side. And I find that uh, some days it's completely empty and barely being used. And other days it gets filled up quickly. So it just kind of varies. But I've had no problem being able to, to dump things in there that I need to. Um, you know, when I was going, when I had the Gaylords, I was clearly, as I was going through them, I was coming across a lot of stuff I had to throw out, such as broken cases, whether they are uh, jewel cases, whether they're, whether they're DVD cases, um, you know, just all, sometimes there's just trash in there. So after I go through a whole Gaylord, I end up having lots of, not a lot, I mean, it's not a ton, but it's a good amount of, you know, the smaller trash cans full of, um, of, of debris. So, well, of, of, uh, garbage anyway. So I'm able to throw it all out. <clears throat> so, um, so yeah, that's good because, yeah, if there wasn't a dumpster, I mean, there's always going to be a dumpster when you have a warehouse space. When you have a storage unit, there's no dumpster. Um, that's not a thing that I'm aware of, at least not any any storage units around here. Uh, but when you have a warehouse space, you definitely should have access to a dumpster. Um, and yeah, so anyway, so the guy came yesterday and he, uh, he picked everything up and it turned out that he was actually a reseller. Uh, he lives a little ways from me, even further east than I am. Um, and I've actually never even been out to where he lives, but, uh, it is, it is a little ways, uh, further, as you might say in the boonies, I guess. Um, especially if you're living in LA, even where we are is way out, but they're even further out into the desert of California. So, um, but he, he's a reseller has been reselling for a few years, three or so years and really does books merchant fulfilled and is, and is trying to get back into FBA. But anyway, so that was cool. We had a chance to chat and talk about a variety of things. He he just got ungated for CDs and DVDs and doesn't know really about how to sell CDs on Amazon in terms of, you know, sales rank to look for and that type of stuff. So we talked about those types of things. But he's a big, uh, pretty big merchant fulfilled seller. So um, JD asks, are you getting rid of pallets for good? Um, well... For now, for now I am. I got rid of those because I wanted to clear up the space because I'm getting so many donations and I'm considering about, I'm considering expanding, adding another bookshelf or so um, for more books in my local sale. So I just wanted to free out the space, but also, yeah, I'm going to trying out this Facebook ad and trying to get direct donations to me through that ad. And also as I grow my Facebook page, I'm looking to go that route for now um, instead of Gaylords, just because um, I'm looking to grow my local presence. Uh, so I figure, you know, getting the word out through the ads and once once I'm able to start doing my local sale again, um, spreading the word that way and just letting people know that I accept donations of all types of media. Uh, and the other thing is not just growing my business, but also because Gaylords can be, they're so big. Uh, there's so much stuff in there that it's just so time consuming and it takes up so much space that um, I'm looking to get small, a lot of smaller donations versus buying a ton of bulk uh, in Gaylords. Um, so as of right now, I've had five donations and um, clearly it's not as much as if I were to buy five Gaylords, but uh, at the same time, it takes up less space. 
and so I'm able to better deal with it and while uh, you know eventually other donations will come in so yeah that's kind of the route I'm looking for right now we'll see how it goes this isn't you know there's no guarantee that this will this will be how I'm going to do it going forward and just see if I can get enough donations um, not only enough book donations but enough donations of other types of media as people start to learn about the fact that I sell and uh, all types of media and will accept donations of all types of media so excuse me so um, it's the experiment I'm doing uh, it's just that those Gaylords take up so much space if my warehouse was maybe an extra couple hundred square feet um, maybe if it was two thousand square feet to 1200 square feet where I could have you know much more room uh, and I could definitely have enough room to have Gaylords then maybe I would consider doing that and I might continue to do it also the other thing you have to consider is that sometimes my source will offer me an incredible deal like they did on those last seven Gaylords I mean they offered me all seven Gaylords for just $50 a pop and it was $350 um, what do you call it delivery included so normally I would have paid way more money I would have paid over a thousand dollars for all those so if those types of if they give me those types of deals again that type of deal I might have to take it because <laughs> it's almost you know it's too good to pass up but again it will depend on the space that I have so we'll see is the Gaylord at one single piece box hey John Doe good morning um it is so it is a four by four by four foot box square well yeah i guess square box i mean you can see here i'll show you the i'm on mute whoopsie yes i'm finally selling so that whole where it says tkm bengard that's a whole box so that's a box how it normally sits um a gaylord box normally sits and i put three other Gaylord boxes inside of that one. I just flattened them out and then folded them in half and put them in there. But that one there that says TKM, that's the normal, um, how it normally looks. So it just, it sits like that on top of a pallet. And uh, you can get, you know, I would get all books, just book Gaylords, or I would get just CDs or mixed media, which should be all the different types of, of non-book media. Um, so that would be a one box and that's a Gaylord box. Uh, actually Gaylord is a company uh, if you look them up they're actually it's actually a branded company uh, so that's just what they're referred to as Gaylords but yeah they're just giant boxes and those boxes are very the cardboard is extremely thick uh, so it's not like a typical box that you would get at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever uh, so in order to cut those or tear them it's a, a little bit more work um, and on the bottom they have flaps as you can see there at the top see the flaps the flaps that kind of go interlock with each other and uh, it sits there it's very sturdy typically and um yeah and and so it's one box and uh once you're done with them you know you have all these giant boxes sitting there empty so what i would do like you saw is i would just stuff other ones inside there and flatten out the other ones but they still take up a lot of space and the pallets take up less space but you know they're heavy and bulky and all in the way and that type of thing. So uh, that's how you're able to <laughs> get those giant uh, or get large quantities of media. And you'll see, you know, they'll also what you can do is if you have the warehouse space and you have the equipment is you can stack them on top of each other. So if you have a bunch of, of book Gaylords and you have a forklift or if you have shelving even, you can um, use the forklift and lift those up uh, and you can actually stack as many as like three I think on top of each other but you know that's um, so by using your vertical space if you have if you need to use that and need to use the space but I don't have a forklift and having a forklift it's expensive to have one I mean you can buy one used but then you have to have a space to store it so my space is definitely not big enough for that um, but big operations will have you know they'll 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 deal with truckloads of of uh, Gaylords. They'll get about forty six to fifty two in an eighteen wheeler, and so they'll offload them and stack them up, and then they'll just have a they'll have a Gaylord dumper. I've seen it before. I've seen a guy who had this whole operation going. He was on the smaller side, but he still was dealing with a lot of bulk. He was a bulk book reseller, 
um, who, when the fees went up, he ended up getting out, but he would stack them on top of each other. He'd get a truckload and then he'd have a, he'd put them in a Gaylord dumper and then the, you know, it slowly dump it onto a, this table he had, it would come down like a chute onto a table and he had a guy or sometimes multiple guys at a computer scanning them and keeping the ones for FBA and everything else would get in, tossed into another Gaylord, which would then, those Gaylords would go somewhere else and, and they'd be stockpiled and then they would be picked up for recycling and he'd get paid for that. Anyway, so that was kind of how that operation can run if you're gonna try to go big into bulk, um, bulk books. Uh, you have to, that's the thing about it is is the most efficient way is is you have a Gaylord dumper which can be a couple thousand dollars for that and you have a giant like chute coming down into either just a normal into a long table or some people have conveyor belts so it comes down the conveyor belt really slow and as the scanner comes they pick up each book scan it scan it they have all the presets set so it just makes a noise if you keep it and you put it over there and then if you're selling locally of course they would distribute them like this Gaylord has kids books this Gaylord has antique books, vintage books. This Gaylord has um, mass market paperbacks. This one is, is hardcover fiction. It's another way, right? You could you could do that if you're, either if you're selling locally or if you're selling off those Gaylords. You're saying, I have I have a Gaylord of hardcover fiction. I have a Gaylord of mass market paperback. I have a Gaylord of kids books. I have a Gaylord of blah, 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 vintage books. So other ways to try to uh, do that. I never got to that point of, you know, Never bought a Gaylord dump or anything like that. But anyway, that's the way to go. Um, I've kind of got off topic, but that's okay. <laughs> so for now, I'm going to get away from the Gaylords. Uh, we'll see how it goes, though. You know, things could change. <clears throat> but yesterday, I was able to... I was really happy to get rid of those, free up some space. And then yesterday, I was able at 10 a.m. to go and meet a lady, um, really nice lady who donated a bunch of books to me. They were all in bags, actually. Uh, I'll show you the video here of that. She had contacted me last week and um, said that she had to go through books because she had to go through her father's books. And then there were other books from a neighbor who was donating them who had been a big Civil War buff. Uh, and so a bunch of Civil War books. And then her brother also had some DVDs. Turned out that there weren't that many DVDs. And also it turned out she was donating some VHS tapes, like really either in sealed VHS tapes or extremely good condition. I haven't had a chance to look through them yet, but I will get to them and we'll see if there's anything good. So let me share this clip with you. Hold on, there's no sound. Whoopsie. Hold on, before I do that, so... Da, 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 da. John Doe says, how does one stay balanced on the bottom one with the bottom Gaylord sides not collapsing? The Gaylord box side seems very floppy. Well, yeah, but when it's full of, of books or of media, it stays in place. Um, even, I mean, even the one I showed you, it's just, it's sitting there fine. It's not a problem um, when they're folded together because the cardboard is very thick and very sturdy. So... It will just, uh, whether it's empty or whether it's full, it'll stay together. Some of the Gaylords have been used over and over and over again. And so sometimes they'll have, the, people will put shrink wrap around them or tape, or they'll use like a like kind of a twine rope where they'll pull, put that around it to make sure that it stays together. So some of the Gaylords have definitely been used for years and are getting to the point of probably needing to be replaced or tossed out. Um, so yeah, if it's a brand new Gaylord, the whole thing is just gonna be one piece, extremely sturdy. The other thing is when I would, I don't have it, cause I didn't have a Gaylord dumper, especially with books, you have to end up leaning in there uh, to pull things out. So you end up bending the, the sides over and it gets either creased or or starts tearing and that type of thing. <clears throat> yeah, they hold up really well. Pat says a few years ago, Greg Murphy had a video on YouTube, his book book set up. It was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
the guy that I knew who I was buying, who I met because he had CDs for sale, who that's how I ended up getting into bulk CDs was because of him, where he was entirely focusing on um, books uh, for FBA. He was not doing Merchant Fulfilled. I think that's the reason, one of the reasons why he ended up closing that business is because he was not diversifying. He was just doing FBA and then selling off all the duds and all the duds to him was everything that wasn't worth sending into FBA. Um, anyway, and he would, um, so he wasn't, he wasn't diversifying. He wasn't doing merchant fulfilled. He wasn't doing eBay and he wasn't selling locally. He was just recycling all that. That's back when he was, you could get paid for people to come and pick up recyclers to pick up your, your bulk books. Nowadays, that's not really the case. Hey, uh, Tom, how you doing? Um, so, but Greg, what Greg would do, uh, is he had a big warehouse and he had, yeah, he had Gaylord, like I was telling you the setup that I was talking about where he had a Gaylord dumpers, he had a conveyor belt and he had people who would just scan. They would sit there for hours all day scanning and books, certain books would go to FBA, although he was just doing Merchant Fulfilled to start, and then he started doing FBA later. So initially it was just Merchant Fulfilled, and they had triggers set for, I believe, NeedoScan, which is a very widely used um, software to for Merchant Fulfilled sellers and FBA. And it'll, it'll, you can set up the triggers similar to your scanning app, and it'll tell you exactly what books make sense to keep for Merchant Fulfilled or FBA, depending on how you have everything set up. Yeah, so he had, I think, like a 20,000 square foot warehouse and would deal with hundreds of Gaylords, go through many, many a day. Um, but yeah, so that's that's a way to go if you want to go huge into books and you want to become, you know, a big seller, basically. And I would recommend that you have a system in place for Merchant Fulfilled where you have all your shelves set up, you have ticketing systems, you can find them quickly when they sell. Um, and if you're doing FBA, it's really great because you can just send them off and not have to worry about them. But yeah, it's kind of like if you stay small like me, you, you're you not going to do as much quantity. Um, it's going to take longer to go through stuff. But um, books are great. I mean, book gaylords are good because if you can get through them quickly, they're pretty inexpensive to get. So I've even seen people where they get a storage unit and they just pack it with the gaylords of books. They buy like 12, 20 at a time. And then they're really ruthless about going through it. They have no interest in selling local. They have no interest in putting together eBay lots or individual items on eBay. Um, and they just, they stick to Merchant Fulfilled and FBA and that's all they do. And then the rest of them, what they would do, I don't know about now in this environment, but before they would have um, recyclers just come pick up their duds from them and they would get paid some money for that and get rid of them and then get a fresh new load. Nowadays, because of how things changed with um, recycling and a lot of recyclers stopped wanting books, um, that it became difficult for that. So I don't know uh, how a lot of booksellers are dealing with that. But anyway, bulk booksellers, big bulk booksellers. Okay. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, so... So, I mean, you can go big into Gaylords if you have, if you're willing to lay some cash out, get a big space, pay for, um, of course, you have to have a pallet jack. That's basic. But if you can have a forklift, too, that's going to make it much quicker. Uh, and if you pay for a Gaylord dumper and then you get uh, a table set up, conveyor belt is another level. <laughs> you can do that, but you can also just have a table and people just... Start, you know, you can have a scanner who you train or you can just have triggers set up. And so you don't really have to train them that much. And the rest of the books, you know, you can, uh, what a lot of bulk, bulk sellers did is they got into, into, they opened up like Murphy did open up a store, but he ended up closing it. But, um, there are other people. I know there's somebody in Florida who has a store in a mall. Uh, I think they're called three, two, one books. You can look them up on Facebook. They have a warehouse operation for online, and then they sort things there for their book sale. And I know there was another guy in either Rhode Island or Connecticut. I can't remember his name. He was a friend of Murphy's, um, who I assume still has a, a, a big local um, sale and also sells online <clears throat> and on eBay. And there's another guy that I saw who was in, like, Kansas, who I can't remember the name of his Facebook page, um, but he had he sold bulk, but he also opened a um, 
a local sale where he prices stuff pretty inexpensively. And then, yeah, that was only ones that I can think of right now who actually have a store who went from bulk online selling to to util to monetizing their duds to sell them locally at a at a sale. So, so yeah, that's definitely a, a way to go. But let me show you, uh, and you guys can talk about it too. I'm just going to show you the video here about the book donations. Here are the books in bags that I had donated today, Tuesday. This morning at 10 a.m. picked up all these. There's quite a lot of books. I don't know um, exactly what's in here. There's also a lot of VHS tapes that look to be either new or sealed. Uh, new, sealed, or really great shape. So that just depends on what it is. Um, so it's a fair amount of books. Uh, it looks like it's more because it's in bags that aren't full. But it's a good amount. So far, this whole corner here, there's those. There's these smaller boxes there. There was another donation. The ones there up against the wall was another one. And these are the Native American books. So those are four. And then I have some other boxes on the other side of the warehouse. I randomly pulled this out of the donation from today. And it are Civil War books from Shelby Foote. It's a three-book paperback book collection here or set, box set. Looked it up on Amazon, and guess what? It sells pretty regularly. It's a 97,000 sales rank right now. And there's no FBA offers, but there are 10 merchant fulfilled offers starting at $44, $45. So with shipping, about $48. Bucks. Um, so that's nice. Selling at merchant fulfilled at the lowest price, I'd make about $26. Um, so yeah, that's uh, a nice find in, um, in this donation. So anyway, and of course, as you know, I got rid of all those Gaylords and pallets. So now I have all this space. Yes. All right. Um, sorry, I was trying to look. Whoops. Here it is. I wanted to show you the, uh, that item that I found, that Civil War set. It's funny. I said it was 91,000 rank. Now the rank is, has gone up a lot. Um, but let me just show you, although I guess we could look it up on, online, but I already have it here. So there it is. Um, Civil War, what is it called? Oh, and Narrative, three volumes, Fort Sumner. Okay. So anyway, it's now the rank is 296, but um, as you can see, there's no FBA offers and there's some merchant fulfilled offers and it does sell for that amount. So that was a nice find. Uh, that's the only one that I just, it just looked interesting to me. So I decided to just look it up real quick. <clears throat> and that was a nice one. So we'll see, that could be the best find of the, of the of those donations or there could be other stuff in there. I don't know. Uh, I did see some VHS tapes. Those are those are necessarily not so great. It just depends on what they are. Although they are, they all do seem to be in great condition, but I don't know, uh, I don't know what uh, what's there. This was actually, she was really, um, excited about the donations she had filled her whole like front of her her porch steps with the with the book with all the books and all the bags and um, I met her father by the way this woman's father uh, where she had put all the bo books uh, is 97 years old and so he was out there reading a book and hanging out and staying quarantined but um, I thought that was impressive right <clears throat> And he was chatty and friendly and everything. Uh, it's impressive. <laughs> How often do you meet a 97-year-old? Unless some of you have some family members that uh, that are uh, of that age. Oh, right. Yeah. So so definitely the um, the Civil War set. Uh, yeah, definitely. I could probably price it higher for FBA. And considering looking at the at the sales history of it, which um, I can show you on here. The sales history shows that it's pretty consistently selling. So definitely I could, um, this is just the, let me open this here. This is the past three months on Keepa. So the green, if you're not familiar, the green line are the sale is the sales rank. And each time it goes down, it typically means there's a sale. So that's only three months. Um, so yeah. The prices, these are all at lowest prices, like FBA prices. The price of it has gone up a bit recently. Uh, so 
I don't know if uh, if these prices will hold currently, but definitely, um, definitely when you, if I send it an FBA, which I definitely could, uh, I'll probably wrap it in like shrink wrap and then slap the sticker on it if I do. But yeah, I could probably sell it for 60 bucks. And I could just wait it out, you know, wait for the right buyer to come by for sure. Uh, do you have any videos on how to sell on Amazon? Uh, you, so do you, I mean, yes, <laughs> probably older ones. I'm currently going to be making some more videos, which are more up to date kind of how to videos. I'm planning out some to do in regards to eBay and to Amazon. So, but I would, if you can, if you, you could probably hunt through some of my videos and find some stuff in there. Uh, I don't know how detailed you want it, Tom. Do, if you want super detailed, like how to sign up and then how to set up a shipment and that type of stuff, I probably don't have those kind of videos. But generally, I have videos about like sales rank and, you know, deciphering that and what types of books or other media to send in and how to decipher the information you see on a scanning app like sales rank, like sales history, the number of offers, merchant fulfilled versus FBA. I probably have a lot of different types of videos like that sprinkled throughout my channel. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, no, I've been I've been thinking a lot lately to do more how-to videos that are more in detail, uh, up to date, of course, 2020 versus something that I made like four years ago which a lot of it is still applicable, but do things do change? Um, yeah, you can look on my channel, but um, well, I would start with, well, it depends. I mean, if you were to start brand new with Amazon, get yourself an account and then you just need to decide whether you want to do Merchant Fulfilled or FBA. What I was going to say is, is start with FBA but you're already comfortable doing eBay and storing and shipping stuff yourself. So Merchant Fulfilled probably wouldn't be a big deal for you. I'm assuming you have the space as well, but FBA might be nice to try that out. Um, you just, it's different animal in the sense of, um, well, Amazon is selling on Amazon is different, but you know, it's got a lot of data. Unlike eBay, it's got uh, sales rank and sales history and, um, that type of information that you can get from that from the scanning apps like the one I use is Scoutly and it's 10 bucks a month and uh, you can scan everything and it gives you the the data instantly but basically I would try FBA just because it would be nice and it's a nice way to uh, to set up with Amazon because you don't have to deal with shipping yourself and that type of thing and they deal with it all but you could try Merchant Fulfilled also Merchant Fulfilled is free to do the thing about FBA is you have to pay for inbound shipping up front. So when you ship in, let's say 40 books, uh, you have to pay for that inbound shipping cost. And then there's a monthly storage fee, which is tiny. It's very tiny, especially if you have a small inventory, it's not much, but um, you're going to want to start selling to make sure that you start recoup your initial investment of shipping items in, and then, you know, make sure you're making way more than, than what you're being charged for the, for the, uh, storage. Cool. Um, awesome. We have some more people watching. If you're first timer here, uh, we do this stream every every day from 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 a.m. Flipping live. I'm Andrew from 510 Books. So feel free to participate in the chat here. Ask questions. Participate. That's what this is about. Um, yeah, you know, we could do a whole a whole show about that. Um, <laughs> about Gaylords and, and selling on Amazon and whatnot. Uh, um, but I wanted to jump into talking about something different, unless you guys have some questions or comments or anything like that. Uh, I will say as a newbie um, for Amazon, it's, it's always good to start selling on Amazon. And books are a great way because you don't need to get ungated or approval or anything like that. You can just start reselling books without an issue. Um, but Amazon is different than eBay. Amazon's, you know, you have to figure out the process, which is not that complicated, but the process of shipping stuff in and which stuff to resell. But uh, <clears throat> I'd say within a few months of doing it, uh, three months or so, you should be, you should have learned quite a lot and, and get 
you know, a lot better with that type of thing. Yeah, <laughs> you're in the UK. Um, it's awesome to get people here who are who are watching from uh, from different countries. So that's cool. Um, I want to talk a little bit about taking about switching gears here and talking about eBay and taking photos on um, for your eBay listings. I'm sure Tom knows a lot about this because he does eBay. Uh, but just some tips and ideas, things that I do when I'm listing uh, items on eBay. And I've figured this stuff out or, or ad adjusted the way that I do this over time. So I've been selling on eBay for three years now. I just passed the three year mark in April. And before that, I was 100% Amazon. Initially, I was 100% FBA and started doing a little bit of Merchant Fulfilled, but it was mostly FBA. And then once I got into bulk, I started to realize that there was a lot of items that I couldn't sell on Amazon. Um, either I was gated or uh, it just didn't make sense on Amazon <clears throat> and that I should look into eBay. <clears throat> and that's when I started dabbling with eBay and I was super scared about it because I didn't know how to do it. Like anything else, like going from eBay to Amazon is the same thing. You just don't know, you know what exactly it's going to take, what you need to do to, um, to start the process. So... Taking quality photos for eBay listings. Um, a couple things I would say. Ah, good question. No, I have not gone into detail. I used to promote more of my items, but I've been selling pretty well without promotions lately. And that might be because of the quarantine. I'm not sure. It might be because I'm listing more often, but I've stopped doing promoted listings. Um, of course, I could go back and promote everything and see if that makes a difference, but uh, I have stopped and, and I'm still getting pretty good sales. So if anybody has experience with promoted listings and has seen it's made a difference in their sales, let me know. Um, I've heard from a lot of people that do promoted sales that they don't have a high percentage. They usually do two, three, four percent. Um, and that seems to be enough uh, from what I've read on some of the forums, the reselling forums. Um, I usually don't do more than three or four percent when I've done it. Uh, and that, I mean, I've sold stuff through promoted listings and that seemed to work. I don't think you need to do 10, 20%, even if eBay recommends it, but chime in if, if people know a little bit more about that than me and they've done some experiments. Um, <clears throat> but as of right now, I'm not doing promoted listings and my sales are pretty good. Uh, again, I could, I could go back and take 50 items and, and promote them, uh, and see, if I sell those as an experiment, but currently I'm not. Um, some of the things about eBay, I would say uh, in terms of photos. So the first option, right, is should you use a stock photo or should you take your own photos? I've always taken my own photos. I don't think I may only have once or twice actually used the stock photo, but I have always been a fan of taking my own photos. I look at it from uh, two perspectives as number one, if I were a buyer and I were going through looking for a certain item and I saw a bunch that had a stock photo, which is just one photo, usually the front of the item perfectly cropped. And then I would see some others that were uh, photographed by the seller. I would probably be more inclined to buy the ones that were photographed by the seller. That's just me personally. Some people might not care. They might only care about the price which is, you know, you see that on Amazon too. Some people will take photos for Amazon, which ends up not mattering <laughs> uh, because most of the people who buy on Amazon won't even bother reading the condition notes, won't look at anything like that. They'll just hit buy and move along. But for eBay, people do tend to look at photos. So I think it's better. I think it, I think it helps your listings uh, to have not only your own photos, but as, as many um, as makes sense. You clearly don't need to have 12 photos for every single item. Uh, you don't need to spend that kind of time. It depends on what the item is, right? And of course, if it's a lot, I mean, as in a lot on eBay, you need to take more photos because there's more stuff to, to document. So number one, I think people, for me personally, I'd be more attracted to an item that hadn't had a personal photos, photos that the seller had had taken. And that also, it just shows exactly what the item looks like because even if it's new or very good or good, you don't know exactly what it's going to look like without actually seeing photos of it. So you can see any slight 
issues with it or, or, or blemishes or whatever it may be. Um, so, you know, for me personally, I prefer to take photos. Now I try to keep the photos to only a certain amount depending on the item. So as an, inst for instance, like if it's a, a CD, if it's a CD, I'll just take three photos. Typically the front cover, the back cover, and then I'll take a photo of it open like this uh, so that they can see the inside of the insert so they can oops, so that they can see the actual disc. And then sometimes if it's a higher priced item or more unusual, I might take a closer photo of the disc as a fourth photo, but only typically three photos. So if I have 20 CDs to list, I'll I'll take um, just typically three photos unless it has more than one disc. That's another thing. If it's like a box set, that's clearly different. But um, you don't need to take a ton of photos, but I recommend if you're gonna take photos that you at least show all of the item off, right? Um, <clears throat> so if you're gonna take your own photos, which I recommend, which is what I do, uh, some things to consider are, and eBay recommends this, having a white background. And that's usually, what I do sometimes in the past, I would do like on a dark table or something, but white typically makes more sense. Um, you know, why? Well, I, I mean, some people might just, Oh, I always have a red background. I always have a purple background. Well, that's fine. And maybe it works. I'm sure there's people that don't do any white backgrounds and they still sell. However, it's, you know, recommended by eBay and it looks better in my opinion, uh, unless the item you're selling is it all white then it might make sense to put it on a darker background just because of the contrast. But most of the stuff I sell is not all white. <laughs> uh, so usually that's why I use a, a white background. You wanna use lots of light. So what I used to do before I had the warehouse is I would take photos sometimes in my storage unit, but there was hardly any light in there. So the lighting was bad. And then I would take also, I took a lot of photos in my house. I have this box that I opened up and put a white, um, like a white poster board on it. And I taped it so that it's at like an angle. It looks like one of those, uh, photography backgrounds. And then I would put the smaller items on there and just take photos. So it would have a white background and that worked out well. Now that I'm in the warehouse, the warehouse, actually, there's a lot of lights in my warehouse. So, and they're pretty bright. So the lighting's really good. Um, so that's usually plenty of light for it. Uh, just put it on my white table. Also I have a white, uh, the walls are painted white so I can put it up against the wall as well. Uh, I recommend doing that. Um, it, it's, it might seem obvious, but make sure you take photographs up close because I'll see, I'll see people like, it'll be like way back here <laughs> versus coming up close and getting a close up photo of it. You know, there's a big difference between this and this. I mean, I know people can click on the photo and try to get a little closer look, but the closer, the more up close and cropped closer to the item it is, it seems to make, it makes more sense to me. Like, why would you have it way back and not be able to see the item? Um, so make sure and do that. Uh, even if you take a photo and there's space around it, make sure and crop it a little closer. Cause what's the point of having that extra space? You want to sell the item. Um, let's see. Well, this seems obvious, but make sure that the, that the, your camera is, is focused on it. It's not blurry. I've seen, I can't tell you how many photos I've seen on eBay where it's blurry. You can't even read what it says or can't even really see it. It's like someone just they're not even thinking about photographing, right? Or how important it is to have decent photos or good photos. And so I think it stand, it makes you stand out when it's a lot of light, white background, up close, not blurry. <laughs> and these are things that are not complicated and they don't take a lot of time to do. You know, if you're using your, 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 your phone, most phone cameras are really good these days. So they'll autofocus for you. Um, uh, they'll take a quick photo, you know, it won't have to take forever. So it's kind of always amazing to me that people don't do that. Um, the more, the better, but you don't have to go to the extreme. Like I said, you know, for a CD three, it seems to be enough. Uh, you don't need to take 10 or 12 photos of a CD cause it's, unless it's something unique about it. 
uh, or it's got signatures or there's some damage to it. That would be the, the reason why um, you might take more photos. A book, for instance, though, you're going to take probably more photos. The cover, the back, the spine, maybe from a different angle to show the, the edge of the pages. Uh, open it up, show the copyright. Typically on eBay, if you're going to sell a book, it's going to be a, a more um, unique book, maybe maybe an antique book or vintage book, collectible book. So you don't want to take lots of photos. If it's got pictures in there, take some photos of that. If there's something wrong with it, if there's a page torn out or a rip or whatever, some writing. Anyway, the more photos, the better when it comes to those certain items. <clears throat> but again, usually um, you don't have to take all 12. It just depends on the item. And of course, if there's multiple, if it's like a lot of four, you want to make sure that you're photographing every single thing in there. Um, show the blemishes, show any issues. Of course, in your condition notes, always be honest and open about that. You don't want someone to receive your item and then it's it's uh, there's an issue with it and you um, have to issue a, a return or, or a refund. Um, also, like I was going to say, take photos, you know, over the top of the item. Not always. It depends on what the item is. But like as a CD, I usually do like this right over it versus at an angle like, you know, at an angle or uh, up against the wall at an angle, that type of thing. Um, it depends on the item, of course, unless you're trying to get a different angle of it. But uh, you can do different angles just to show off the, you know, like for a book, for instance, right? But typically it's like an over the over the top type of photo that you want to take just to show exactly how it looks. Um, don't try to get too fancy with that type of stuff is what my recommendations would be. Um, so if you guys have anything to add to that, please feel free. I know some of you have been selling on eBay a lot longer than me, but those are some of the tips I would say or things that have made sense for me. Um, an individual item is of course different than, uh, um, than a lot, but here, let's, let's look, I'm on eBay right now. I looked up Snoop Dogg. These are all for sale. So, So a lot of these are um, like that stock. That's clearly not. But like here's an example. This one's sponsored. So perhaps I can't see it on my hair. They have it at an angle, which is not necessarily bad. And they're using um, they're not using a white background. But you see that glare. That's not so hot. But it's because they have a, a light, a bright light over it. So it's a little. Um, that's probably why they're doing it at an angle because if they did the photo directly over it, the light would be shining on there. But there's ways to avoid that. You can you can block out the light with something, uh, just you know put up another CD or something, and so it doesn't glare so harshly. Like that's a little blurry, you know. <laughs> um, that's not the best photo. Will he sell it? He or she sell it? Maybe. That's nice, right? It's got a black background. I think white would make it stand out a little better because it's kind of all this darkness is drowning in there. But again, you know, to each their own. Look, at there's this one too at an angle. Um, again, it's probably because of the glare of the, you can see the glare here right on the edge. That's probably why they're doing it at an angle. To me, it just, the darkness doesn't, doesn't stand out as well. Here, this one, this one's, sometimes you'll see this where they'll put it on a little, a little, um, stand which is fine that's a way to avoid the glare but it's still a little dark but it does look good this one's up against the wall um, let's see what's sold so stock there's no photo there see I mean this guy sold with a black background I mean to me I wouldn't shoot it like that but um, it did sell I mean, he didn't crop it, <laughs> but it doesn't matter always, you know, look at this, all these black backgrounds proving me wrong. Oh my gosh. That's just thrown on the carpet. Anyway, um, does everybody that sells Snoop Dogg uh, CDs only have a black or hardwood background? Is that what's happening here? That is so strange. It's like the same person. Maybe it's the same seller. 
That's so weird. <laughs> what is happening? That's pretty funny. Um, let's do uh, pink. Oops, pink Floyd. That one's sideways. That is so weird. This is so weird how this one is. Oh, anyway. Okay. That one's sideways. I don't understand that. Why would you take a photo like that? That is so weird to me. Okay. All right. Um, share a few sales that I had uh, over the night. This one here, these are eBay sales. So I listed um, a bunch of DVD lots for Buy It Now on eBay. And they, uh, I sold one yesterday or last night or this morning or whenever that sale happened. I think it happened last night actually. It was a workout DVD lot of dance workout routines and there was 10 of them. And I listed a bunch of these different types of workout um, DVD lots as buy it now with the option to make an offer and they all have shipping on them. Um, and this one was, they could have made an offer but they just bought it, 10 DVDs for $24.99 plus shipping. So that was really nice. Uh, so that's my first one of these, of the lots that I put up and um, I'm glad for that, that it's sold. I'm trying this out as an experiment to see if I can, how long it takes for these to sell, if they will sell at the prices that I listed them or close to it instead of doing an auction. So I have those stacked up in my warehouse and uh, we'll, we'll see as an experiment how that goes. Um, so I sold this as well. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this before. Uh, Eddie Murphy, one night only for your Emmy consideration 2013 so I come across these in in I've come across these a lot in Gaylords and they are FYC which is for your consideration and these are typically ones that are sent out to um, to either to, to people that are that are that are oopsie this doesn't want to come out well anyway there's a DVD in there uh, these are typically sent out as sort of like advertisements to try to get people to vote for them um, to win an Emmy. And so these are not sent out to the general public, but the people that receive them uh, will end up a lot of times just donating them, getting rid of them. And some of these can be worth a lot of money. Uh, I've sold a few, dozens or so, but a few for really good money. This one was only... I took an offer for $14 on this one. There's not that many copies, but it does not go for a lot of money. But uh, that sat for a few months. I have sold some other. I sold a Bill Murray one that was a Christmas special that was super rare. And right when I put it up there, I, I listed it for $29.99. It sold instantly. I had another one, which was the, a show about um, oh, Joan. Was it Joan Rivers and... and uh, Betty, what was her name? I can't remember, but it came out a few years ago and it was a purple case and it was pretty rare and it sold for really good money. I can't remember. I think it was over 50 bucks that I sold it for. Uh, so take always be on the lookout for these FYC for your consideration ones. A lot of them are not worth money, but some of them are. So it's worth it if you see them in a thrift store or someone has a collection in a estate sale, maybe it could be worth buying the whole collection if they're selling them for cheap um, or just looking at them individually because there are some really valuable ones in there. And then this is a, this is a video game, uh, Warcraft. And this is another example of, um, hold on. I want to see how much it went for. Right. So this one sold for $22.99. Uh, Warcraft 3. Uh, what is it called? Battle Chest. And it has two. Oh, right. It has two in there. Reign of Chaos and... 
Frozen Throne. So it's got two CDs in there. This is a um, more of a higher priced one. These Warcraft ones uh, uh, were, I think that there's another one. I can't remember, but these Warcraft ones can go for some really good money. So that one sold. That's been up there for, I don't know, not too long, maybe a couple months. Um, of course, you always, you know, you want to have those, uh, what are those called? The uh, CD keys on there as well. But there's another example of a PC video game that sold for me. Um, I pretty consistently sell PC games on on eBay. Uh, it's surprising how often they go for good money. Um, so uh, Brian said, I heard the first photo should be square format to display optimally. Yeah. Definitely. Um, have you watched one of them? It might be interesting to see what's different watching them versus the public release. Uh, I watched the Bill Murray one, although I had never seen the the public one. Um, but I don't think there was anything different uh, for that one, for the Bill Murray one, the Christmas special one. Um, let me see if it's if I can find it. Bill Murray F Y C D. There it is. Here's the one that I sold. It's called a Barry Murray Christmas. Um, yeah, they sold it for that. I think that was the same price that I sold it for. Here's another one. This one's only 19, so you can get a lot more money for that. But you see that they're, uh, let me see if there's any available. There are, huh? But you can get more money. I'd price it more at this price than this price. And look, that is that a stock photo? Oh, no, it's not. Okay, they just cropped it really close. But anyway, um, there's only one, two available. So yeah, so that's an example of one. Um, I'm trying to remember the other one. Let me see if I can remember. Uh, it was Joan and Betty, I believe. There it is. It was this one. Uh, feud. That's what it was called. Feud. Uh, 2019, right? And look at that. Look at what it goes for. I don't remember what I sold it for, but it was up there. This is the one that, if you ever see, you should pick it up. Here you can see. Uh, it's got several. I believe it's got several. Um, Oh, that one doesn't show any other photos, which is so weird, but it doesn't matter because it's in such three DVDs. That's right. It's got three DVDs in there. Yeah. So that's the other one that I sold for really good money. I can't remember exactly how much I sold it for. Uh, so, whoops, let me go back. So yeah, definitely look out for those uh, FYC for your consideration shows, especially that feud one. Um, it's rare enough to where it goes for that kind of crazy money. Apparently they haven't released it on DVD in any other way. So if they do end up releasing it, uh, then the price of that will probably go down, but that's the complete series. And that was a pretty popular show that came out last year. I think it was the beginning of the year. Um, so that's right. It's a screener from FX press book. Yeah. I mean, look at the prices. <laughs> See that one doesn't go for, um, yeah, that's different though. These are all going for like 80 bucks, $75. This one went, look at this one. That's crazy. This one, there's one that went for, um, a hundred and, and look at that one, $159. But most of, look at that one, but they're brand new, aren't they? Brand new. Uh, although some people put brand new on there and it might not be. So $120 brand new, $899 um, used. Yeah. So, uh, so yep. I'm glad you guys tuned in today. Uh, it's 8 a.m. So flipping live. This has been day 18. 
I'm glad you guys tuned in. Uh, we'll be going live again tomorrow. Uh, I don't have any donations planned as of now, um, but today, what I'm gonna be doing, um, today is a day that uh, I'm gonna take my kids to the grandparents' house, and they will be spending the day there. So my wife and I is actually, my wife's gonna go into work um, briefly, and then I will be going to the warehouse, and I am excited about putting the, the empty bookshelf that I have where I had DVDs, I'm going to be filling that with my kids' books and freeing up this 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 shelving shelf I have on wheels that I'm going to wheel over to the end of the other bookshelves, and I'm going to put my audiobooks on that one. I know this is exciting stuff for you guys. I'm going to put audiobooks on that one. And then um, I'm going to, I think after that, I'm going to dive into those records that I have and start sorting through those if all goes well, uh, because they're just sitting on the floor in boxes and crates, and uh, there's about a thousand of them, and I need to start going through those so that I can find out if there's any individual valuable ones that are worth selling online versus selling locally, ones that could be worth some good money. These are mostly records that, um, they're mostly like 60s, 70s, and mostly, uh, soul, funk, Motown, that type of stuff. Um, a lot of black artists and these, uh, uh, some of the, some of the people just by looking at, you know, at the, at the artist, who knows, there could be some really good stuff in there. I know the guy that I bought it from, he needed money, um, cause a family member had passed away, uh, and he'd had them since he was a kid. They'd been in the family, but he needed to, you know, he needed the extra money. So I was glad to help him out um, in his situation where he needed it. Um, and we'll see, we'll see what's there. A lot of the, a lot of the covers are pretty ratty, <laughs> which is typical for records. And when you come across, it's going to be hard to find, you know, a 1972 blah blah, you know, whatever record that's the the cover is actually in great condition. Because think about the decades and if somebody was playing it a lot and it was, you know, a lot of people don't take care of that stuff pretty well. So some people do and occasionally you can find them in excellent shape. But by and large, those they're going to be kind of rough shape um, so anyway. So I'm going to go through those, start that process and we'll see where it takes me. So I appreciate you guys watching and let's play this song so we can get out of here. Beard's 18 days old. The show's 18 days old. I'm going to keep doing this show as long as most of us are in quarantine. And as it's looking right now, it looks like that's going to be a while. <laughs> so uh, thank you for tuning in, though. We're going to talk about reselling stuff. We're going to try to have some fun. Sometimes we have, it's all business. Sometimes we have a little bit more fun. Um, but I really do appreciate you guys watching and participating in the chat, asking questions, uh, offering information, things that, that, that can help me and help others. That's what this is all about, is helping each other and uh, coming together during this time. And thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, tomorrow, uh, maybe we'll talk about a different topic. Maybe we'll talk about Gaylords, uh, talk about something different, um, and uh, we'll dive into it. So thank you for watching, guys. Have a great Wednesday. Hopefully you're able to sell a lot. Hopefully you'll be able to list a lot, maybe source a little bit. Whatever you need to get done, hopefully it works out for you. And um, stay safe, wash your hands, stay away from people. And I'll see you tomorrow. Take care, guys.